Hi and welcome everybody to EcoFounder TV. You're here today with me, George Gray, and today I'm joined with a special guest, um, David Berry, who's reaching us here from Auckland. How are you going, David? Yeah, great, thanks. Awesome, and David is here today. He is the Managing Director of Control Vision Limited. Uh, they are an engineering firm which specializes in supplying machine vision and robotic technologies to manufacturers, integrators, and OEMs. Um, David's been in the both sides of things as far as um, being in the business world and as an engineer. So we're going to learn, it's going to be a really interesting um, episode today to learn about how you can balance both of those and uh, the struggles and tribulations of an engineer going into business. So welcome to the show, David. Yeah, thanks, George. Awesome. Um, so just why don't you just share with us quickly about what you do and what machine vision and robotic technology systems really are. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll start just um, talking about machine vision, um, or otherwise known as um, computer vision. Um, it's not, it, it's still quite a niche um, business area. In fact, um, it has been around for about 25 years um, in industry where, um, you know, researchers and companies have been using um, camera um, imaging and computer software to do measurement and analysis. So it's been around for quite a long time, but um, in mostly up until probably 10 years ago, it was focused on automotive and electronics industries. Mm -hmm. And in the last sort of decade or even less, um, we've seen just a real explosion of applications into not just um, manufacturing, but um, you know, surveillance, face recognition, uh, traffic management, there's just, um, you know, a huge number of areas where um, computer vision is being used to do automated, you know, number plate detection, there's there's quite a number of applications. So we've pretty much been focused on the, um, the manufacturing side of things. So we build systems and write software to use the camera imaging for product quality control, um, guiding robots. Um, you know, doing measurements and um, recognition. So that's kind of our area of focus, but it's a very small part of the overall um, computer vision um, sphere, really. And it, it, and it's moving very fast. Um, you know, especially in the surveillance area, that you know, the number of cameras you see popping up on street corners and, right. and shops and everywhere. It's just um, and you know, mostly at the moment, people are just using those for video capture, but. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of changes where um, they're being used for analytics and, you know, counting people or recognition or, you know, there's still wow. a, a lot of, uh, a lot of scope um, for, for, you know, development in that area. So there'll be and, um, Google traffic analytics soon, do you think? Well, you know, <laughs> they've already got, you know, um, Google goggles or whatever it was called and, yeah. you know, there's, there's lots of recognition stuff. Um, happening and you know you can imagine even you know sites like Facebook all they need is a face recognition engine and behind you know all the pictures are stored I mean they're already doing that you know right. Right. it's 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 evolving very quickly and you know and, and I guess in the types of things we do you know there's the old saying that a picture's worth a thousand words is absolutely true when it comes to um, you know, look, you know, doing product quality control and, and you know, as, as a sensing technology, you know, for robots and, and manufacturing. Um, you know, previously we have a sensor that might detect the edge of a part or something and now you have a technology that, you know, can visualise the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you, know, and, you know, it gives a way of computers and control systems to interact more intelligently with the environment around them and, and the process that they're trying to control. So, you know, it's been it's been huge. Um, you know, we've seen, a, you know, from when we started, um, it was 11 years ago now actually, yeah. and um, New Zealand, because our manufacturing base is actually very small and we don't have any automotive or electronics, um, we had very little interest in, in machine vision um, at the time we started, you know, people just, like, well, what am I going to use this technology for? And it's the other way around now. You know, people can see their competitors are employing the technology to get, you know, um, production, reduce cost by, by reducing wastage because they're, 
they're detecting you know product defects or quality problems before they get packaged or before they get sent to the customer so yeah. you know it's it's quite an effective um, um, means of, of you know being part of the manufacturing process and telling manufacturers about how their processes um, are operating so um, awesome. yeah so that's sort of the the computer vision um, field and you know I guess at the same time um, robotics has been evolving very quickly artificial intelligence so all these things are coming together now you know giving robots the power of sight um, right, yeah. is an incredibly enabling technology not just for manufacturing but you know for automatic guided vehicles and you know aircraft and you know this the combination of sensing technologies and other technologies um, you know really allows a new sort of um, I guess evolution and in, in automation of things wow and that's um, yeah so that's I guess where our interest lies and we do quite a bit of work um, putting cameras on robot systems um, for you know again mainly for manufacturing applications but we've done things like milking cows with a camera on the end of the, yeah. on the, the robot arm and, and things very, like that. A very New Zealand thing to be doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so it sounds like there's a, some amazing um, amazing future in the industry. Um, but Dave, uh, why don't you share with us today just um, some of your key experiences that you've had over your career um, and you know, share any insights that um, there might be or anything that you that you might have changed actually um, during your career yeah I guess um, when I, uh, I I graduated university actually as a mechanical engineer um, I thought I wanted to design machines um, which then I realized quite quickly I didn't right. um, I, you know um, but I during the during the my studies I got quite interested in control systems and electrical and at the time when I was at university there was very little crossover between disciplines you did mechanical and next to no electrical or you did electrical and next to no mechanical and right. these days um, you know um, there's there's a new discipline called mechatronics which yeah. is kind of where I was heading at the time although I didn't know it at the time um, and I um, just got into writing um, software um, through my first job it's some sort of things just weren't planned you know I didn't really have a career path mapped out I just kind of um, got into the workforce found some things I like doing and and it really kind of evolved from there and and I spent quite a number of years um, doing automation and process control for um, dairy factories and water treatment plants and manufacturing operations and then um, you know, started to see the, the there were opportunities coming up for doing robot projects, and you know, um, about twelve or thirteen years ago, we started getting some interest from customers in computer vision, and it, it there were you know there were there were some installations that had been tried here at that time, and there was a couple of companies doing computer vision, but it was kind of you know. I, I guess the success rate was probably less than 50% of those projects actually lasting. Right. Um, because the technology, you know, at the time was quite, you know, it, did, it, it worked, but it took a lot of skill to make it work and, you know, a very sort of wasn't as um, able to cope with the type of manufacturing we do here, which, you know, tends to be a lot of short runs, lots of different products, lots of changes in the production process you know because our manufacturing is quite um, you know agile in that way we, we we just have such low manufacturing volumes that you know lines get reconfigured all the time for doing different products so you know back back then um, it was a difficult technology to work with and it's um, it's certainly changed a lot now so I sort of um, I guess my career path has been a bit of a journey in terms of the the projects that we've done and they've been quite diverse and I guess I'm you know it's taken a long time to work out where I want to go um, and I'm really interested in, in the technology that we're working with now and I'm you know I guess I'm really interested to take that into um, areas like medical imaging and, and you know where there is really scope for you know um, 
helping people and using the technology in, right. in, in, in interesting ways, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the big things that we talk about, um, that I like to talk about at EcoFounder, is how we can create a bigger impact with uh, technology and engineering solutions and scale them. So it sounds like you're definitely on the right track there. With the yeah, and, you know, I guess we learned a lot in the last um, couple of years. We spent probably the last... Um, five or six years developing a product, a software product, okay. and it very much evolved out of a gap we saw in in the work that we were doing. We didn't have enough tools to do it quickly. You, you know, we do a lot of one-off projects here. You, the engineering is the biggest cost um, on the project, and you're always looking for ways to do it more quickly um, and efficiently. Otherwise, for one. You know, the customer's not going to buy the solution in the first place if it's too expensive. And right. the other is once you start the project, you're really trying to, you know, manage your costs and the time that you spent on it. So we started developing a software package and it sort of was a very much a part-time thing for a few years. And then we sort of started to realize that, you know, the benefit that it was giving us would be the same for any other company worldwide that was doing similar sort of work to us in, in, right. in, in that space. So we kind of turned it on its head and started from, we, we learned a lot of things and then got to the point where, well, we kind of really start, you know, we need to redevelop it. So we started again from scratch with, you know, all the ideas in our head now and a plan of how we were going to do it and um, really focused on developing it as a product. Um, and it, um, it was hard work. Um, and especially trying to market it from New Zealand um, to companies in Europe and the US where you don't have local representation and, you know, you're a small company and it's a very technical field and, you know, the product has to, you know, it has to meet a very high standard before people are going to look at it to use it in, a, in an engineering or automation situation. It has to be, you know, very reliable. So the standard, the, the barrier to entry is very high, which... Kind of works in your favour as well because if you, if right. you get to that level, then the barrier of entry for your competitors is, you know, extremely high. So, right. you know, it's it's a space where we kind of had a, an edge in terms of time because we'd come up with the idea before anybody else. Um, other companies, we you know, we we realised that companies with far more resources than us <laughs> are trying to work on the same problem. Um, and in fact, last year, one of those companies um, based in the US bought our product um, mm -hmm. and bought the IP for it. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it worked very well for us. And that sort of changed our thinking in terms of how we do business. And mm -hmm. especially in New Zealand, where our, our marketplace for our solutions is very small. Mm -hmm. But once you start dealing with other companies globally and realizing, you know, they face the same challenges to a large extent that you do in your own environment yeah. and you know if you start with the you know focusing on well my marketplace is this global marketplace and you know how do i you know approach that from the very start not develop a product and then go well how am i going to sell it globally it's you know it's something that you really want to take on board from day one and the marketing plan goes hand in hand with the product development plan whereas right. You know, when, our, when we did it, the marketing plan and everything came a bit later when we sort of right. you know, the product got to a certain level. So it was kind of a, you know, it was a difficult journey, but it worked out in the end. And right. I guess that's our plan is to, you know, with the next idea is, is kind of try and do the same thing and on, on, a, on a larger scale, having the benefit of um, some experience now, I think. Awesome. Awesome. Now, that sounds amazing, and it's, it's good that you said that actually about the um, good that you said that about the marketing plan. And starting off from the beginning with the marketing plan, and it goes hand in hand in the product development, like you just said. Um, Dave, for our listeners uh, today, um, would you be able to share one piece of advice for any engineers and scientists that might be going into business? Um, I think you know, for one thing, learn about yourself in terms of what you like to do and then um, research you know if, if you're if you're an engineer or whatever research that industry to see where you think the opportunities are I think um, the um, 
you know, when you, when you come out of university and not really with a lot of knowledge about what's actually happening in the industry, I think it's really important that you try and get some experience or some awareness of, you know, whether it's just through internships or work experience or whatever, but try and get that early on so you, you kind of can see where industry's going and, you know, if, you, if you're one that is an innovative type of person, then you, you can sort of start seeing where the, where the opportunities are quite early. And, gotcha. you know, I, I guess that's the one thing that I'd probably do differently than when, when I went out into the workforce. It was more, you know, go out there and see what landed on your plate. And, and now it's, you know, actually I'm really thinking about what I want to do and what, right. how I want to bring my skills to the marketplace and what the type of problems that I'd like to solve. And that's, for me personally, uh, that's, you know, I am a problem solver. That's kind of, you know, what I do. And, you know, now rather than people waiting for people to bring me their problems to solve, I'm looking for the ones that, you know, I think are worthwhile or that I'd like to be working on. Awesome. Awesome. And that's, that's usually insightful. Thanks. Thanks for okay. that, Dave. And, um, yeah, cheers for, cheers for all, your, um, all your advice today. Uh, it's been great hearing your story. Um, I'm sure that this has got a lot out of the interview today. So cheers for that. Um, if anyone wanted to find out more about your work or um, your company, where, where would they find you, Dave? Um, well, the easiest thing is to come to our website, which is um, controlvision.co.nz. Mm -hmm. And um, there's some application stories on there of um, some of the projects we've done. Um, and, you know, there's um, an email contact there. If people want to find out more, then more than welcome to um, make contact and, you know, um, ask for advice or whatever. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today, Dave. Okay. Thanks a lot, George. That's all we great. have time for today on EcoFounder TV. Um, make sure to subscribe below this video. And if you're reading this from uh, YouTube, you can head to the blog to find out um, the links to Dave's work. Thank you.